Let's go ahead and get into it. We're good. We're seeing me. We hearing me. We good. Everybody doing all right. <laughs> all right. Let's go ahead and get into the thing, y'all. Marlon Wayne's comedian and actor Marlon Wayne's is reportedly facing a child support and custody battle after allegedly fathering a secret one year old daughter. Wayne's allegedly shares two sons, Kai, 23, who transitioned from his daughter, um, Amai or May. Um, and Sean, 21, with his ex-girlfriend, Angelica Zachary, a.k.a. Angela Zachary, whom he dated from 1992 to 2013, per the blast. New court documents obtained reportedly show Wayans, 51, being sued by his alleged baby mama, Brittany Moreland, 34. The publication says that on Monday, March 18th, Moreland filed a paternity petition to determine the parental relationship between her, Wayans, and his alleged daughter, Axie Julie Ivory Wayans. The Blast also reports that the actor's alleged child's mother is demanding over $21,000 a month in child support. The Blast reports that Moreland is seeking primary physical and legal custody of her daughter while also granting visitation rights to the white chick's actor. Additionally, the mother is requesting that her legal fees and reasonable expenses of pregnancy and birth be taken care of by Wayans. In addition to her paternity petition, Moreland has also reportedly filed an income and expense declaration, which means she's trying to pursue child support from her daughter's alleged father, Marlon Wayans. Moreland reportedly claims that the scary movie actor pulls in a monthly salary of $200,000 a month. She further claims that while raising her daughter, she has racked up an estimated $22,000 in total annual expenses in the alleged docs. Moreland claims that she spends $5,000 monthly on her rent and nearly $9,000 on child care, groceries, and household supplies. She also claims she's spending $1,500 on clothes, including the child's program uniforms. Additionally, in her request, Moreland reportedly wants $2,000 for additional expenses, expenses, which she labeled as child care, so that she can go to work. Okay. Um... Well, that's 10% of his income. The oldest one is grown. So he has, uh, oh, no, no, no. Both of them are grown. So this is his youngest. Yeah, no, he's okay. He can handle it. He shouldn't have bust off in that lady. Like, fuck out of here. You, you had unprotected sex with this woman. She had the baby. She kept the baby. She's taking care of the baby. The baby's one years old. That's 10% of your income. You can afford it. Send her the money. Send her the money. I don't see the problem. Like, <laughs> come on. Yeah, I know I got to get my uh, news reporter voice popping for y'all. I used to do it really good when I worked at the news station. I would actually mimic some of the other anchors because their voices were so over the top. I would copy them. Most hilarious shit. But yeah, um, I, I don't feel bad for Marlon because I just kind of feel like you're 51, dude. If you're done with kids and child support, get a vasectomy. You have money. Like you're a like your dick is a liability at this point. So for me, I just kind of feel like was she your girlfriend? Was she was a one off? It doesn't matter. She's finally after after a year asking for child support, which means to me. She probably tried to work with you without going this route and you didn't want to work with her. So now we're going to court. And that's the thing a lot of niggas online like to negate that y'all ignore the women when they come to y'all. Y'all think y'all can just ignore the problem and it'll go away. But no, like that's not how any of this works. 10% of his income and part-time custody is a steal. I think it's a good deal. I think he should just take it. Like, you know, you're gonna you're not gonna have the time to be a full blown parent. Um, and you the one that's like having unprotected sex with people at 51. Like, yeah, of course, but that's what all of this is for. But everybody's so upset about the child support, the custody back. Like you see child support and custody, not if the baby's his, you know what I'm saying? But something tells me the baby probably his. <laughs> The baby's probably his, but we'll wait and see if this one-year-old daughter is actually his. But the, I mean, Ivory Wayans, girl, we'll wait and see. But if the baby is his, 
Yeah, just go ahead and send a girl the ten percent. Yeah, I, I believe you know uh, Wayne Marlon was a Kevin Samuels fan. Once I figured out that he was a Kevin Samuels fan, I I I felt his energy was weird. I felt his energy was weird ever since then. Um, I still like him. You know what I'm saying? Like it's Marlon for God's sakes. I still love Marlon. You know what I mean? Like you grow up with these people essentially. You don't know them, but you grow up with them. You know what I'm saying? So in, unless they are, you know, murdering and molesting, you still fuck with them. All right. So let's go ahead and move on. Grace Jabari, the ex-girlfriend of Jonathan Major, sues the actor for defamation, assault and battery. So y'all, this is not from the situation that happened at the beginning of 2023. This is not that. This is something that happened in September of 2022. And we've talked about this before because part of Grace Jabari's defense that he was abusive to her in the relationship was text messages from this incident. So whatever happened between them, and now she's explaining what happened, she had head injuries and wanted to go to the hospital. And she was texting him about it. And he threatened to kill himself if she went to the hospital because people would find out that it was him and he has so much to lose and all of that shit and he's such a bad person and you know he's like I'm not a good person he was doing all of this you know all of this trauma bonding you know manipulative bullshit to try to get her not to go to the hospital after they had had some physical altercation well now she's suing him for said physical altercation I think she thinks he got off um too easy um, in the original case, probably. And somebody told her she can probably get more out of this situation. So she's going to attempt to. Jonathan Major's ex-girlfriend is still coming for him. According to a new report by NBC News, Grace Jabari has filed a civil complaint and sued the actor for defamation and other alleged injuries. As we previously reported, Jonathan Majors was found guilty of assaulting his former girlfriend, Grace Jabari. According to multiple reports, a split verdict was made where Majors, 34, was found guilty of one misdemeanor assault charge and one harassment violation he was acquitted of a different assault charge and of aggravated harassment following the conviction marcel and disney decided marvel and disney decided uh i'm sorry immediately dropped majors from all upcoming projects majors had earlier planned to be a central figure throughout the marvel cinematic universe playing the antagonist role of kang majors had already appeared isn't that so funny the black kang anyway because, you know, people still defend him. People still defend him and act like none of this happened. Um, but he was supposed to be uh, the star in the Avengers, Ken the Kang Dynasty, um, which was supposed to be released for 2026. But he was dropped from the role. So Hollywood has decided they're not fooling with him anymore. And so now he's coming back over to the black people's side, which is why the Megan Good thing happens. I tell y'all all the time that black women will save a black man's career in Hollywood. Um, it's just how it happens every time. Okay. Um, they get in trouble, go grab a go grab a black woman. You know, the black people will, you know, huddle around you until white people forget. And then eventually, you know, we'll rebuild you back up like Wesley Snipes or somebody. You know what I mean? Um, but I do feel um she was deep in that relationship. I think so too. I think it's very hard for her to let it go. I think her seeing him and Megan Good posted on blogs and shit like that is probably another thing that bothers her and makes her want to come after him. Um I don't feel any type of way either way. Like, you know, I don't feel sorry for him or anything, but I also, you know, don't feel like, oh, take him down, girl. Like, I don't feel that way either because this just kind of feels like a, a lot of energy to somebody that you really just need to let go of and move on from instead of trying to get vengeance on him. And it just showcases how she's toxic in a relationship just like he is. And we've said that, but that's normally how that goes. Also, when women are in abusive relationships, it does become like a drug addiction. So they act out in crazy ass ways when they can't get the attention or get the, the validation from the person anymore, especially when you see them out in the street with somebody else who, you know, they were cheating on you with. And we all assume that because Megan Good showed up to court with him so soon after everything happened, that they must have been having a relationship of some sort when he was still with Grace Jabari. And based on other articles I've read about him, there seems to have, you know, he likes to overlap the girls. Okay. 
Now, everybody that likes to, you know, they're having, he's having a Chris Brown effect where everybody's ignoring all the other stories that are happening surrounding him and acting like this is the only case that we're hearing about. They're ignoring all of those people that wrote to Rolling Stone saying that he was a physical violent person. They're, you know, ignoring the two other girlfriends that have come out and said that they were in violent relationships or abusive relationships of some sort with him. Um, everybody's ignoring all of that and acting like this is the only situation that's occurred. Um, they're also ignoring the fact that something is not right with Megan Good. I've already said that. Um, I don't know why she continues to look like she's bleaching her skin. I don't know what's going on there. Um, I don't think she's bleaching her skin, but something is going on. The eyebrow, she's always looking crazy in the eyes, girl. It's just nothing looks safe. Nothing looks safe. So we'll just, you know, we'll see how this all plays out. Now, I do believe he was somewhere with no shirt on. And when he does things like this, it's what makes me feel like he's always trying to show off for people. And I've been peeping it for the longest. But every anytime you see him out in public, anything he's doing is intentional, right? So he responded to... How are you? Looking he responded. Good. I know. I mean, I see your trainer here. I mean, what are you training for? Work. Work. Okay. What, what, what kind of work? Like a project? Any acting or anything? Yeah. Oh, my God. Okay. Tell me a little. Fingers crossed. I kind of want to know a little. <laughs> fingers crossed. Does it feel good to get back into acting, doing what you love? Nothing better in the world. Yeah. Of course. I mean, I want to know. Except my kid. Huh? Except my kid. Except your kid? That's better than acting. I think he's trying to invoke an image. That's why he said that. Because what the fuck? Okay. And Megan. <laughs> and Megan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, I want to know. You guys are so in love on the red. So we're going to act like when she's asking you, is it good to be back acting? What projects do you have going on? Because we know you lost them because of this whole situation with Grace Jabari, this DV situation. you going to act like you don't know anything about that but then you're gonna mention megan like we know exactly who you're talking about like come on dude red carpet last month i mean i gotta ask what's so different about megan for other past relationships um, my heart. Yeah. this feels like he calls them like he i tell y'all whenever paparazzi show up somewhere i think people called and I think that somebody called paparazzi and said he'll be coming out of the gym at 2.15. Make sure you're there. Ask these questions. You know. Oh, she's your heart. I mean, why do you guys think you work so well as a couple? Uh, connection. Connection? Yeah. Okay. Hello, Jonathan. How are you? Love that for Understanding. you. Understanding. Love. I go on. <laughs> <laughs> of course. And I wanted to ask you, last question. Yeah. I mean, I know your ex is, you know, filed another lawsuit against you i mean how have you been how another have you been one this? yeah <laughs> i mean i mean we're not, i'm not surprised you're you not know. surprised no i knew it was coming for uh you know, from the beginning really yeah. okay i mean <laughs> how do you feel about it i mean, are you, I mean i'm sure you're ready to put this all behind you I, I am ready to put it behind me i can't say much else about it though okay that's the law of course. All right. Well, thank you so much. Okay. Love that. Yeah, it feels as if this was something he was acting like y'all he's acting all of the looking off to the side and smiling like, you know, just, uh, yeah, it is. It's acting. He's acting. He's acting. And it's creepy. And I've been telling y'all, I told y'all when that when he had that moment with Michael B. Jordan in that interviewer and he stopped Michael B. Jordan from talking. I told y'all it was given. Let me show you how to manipulate this situation. Oh, we so glad it's you. We so glad it's you because it's the thick black woman. Right. So this is supposed to make everybody feel like y'all love thick black women. Not everybody going to be online losing their shit behind him. And it worked. It worked for a moment. Until he got in trouble, like maybe a month later. But I'm just saying, like, I've been peeping the way he acts in these moments when the cameras are around. When the cameras are around, when he knows there are cameras around, he is always acting. He's always acting. Always. Interviews, 
this type of shit, he's not being Jonathan Majors a person. He's being Jonathan Majors the actor. But you know, there are some people that's, you know, still going to fall for it. They're still going to, you know, believe the lies, believe the hype, believe the manipulation. And, you know, that's that's on them, girl. Now, let's go ahead and move on because I wanted to get into Portia and Nene further because of the text messages. Um, I want to do quiet on set, but I'm going to wait until next week. That'll be the members only live that I give y'all next week when I'm out of town, because I really want to wait for Friday. I mean, for tonight's part to come out. And so I can kind of give y'all a whole comprehensive, but you know, of course y'all know how I feel, um, about all of those men, you know, but we'll, we'll just wait on that. Um, where it first of all before we move on to Portia and Nene these two these two allegedly getting divorced right and allegedly princess is dating John Boyega and Ray J finds out on camera Ray J is acting like he's still and was in the bathroom for a while you got watch... media takeout oh first thing <laughs> Well, First according thing. to this top story on here, British oh, actor John Boyega is now dating Ray J's wife, Who, Princess Love. Oh, you know him from The Woman King. The Woman King. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. Oh, you didn't know that movie? Oh. Yeah. So that's John Boyega. Okay, you're taking your glasses oh, off. Uh oh. Okay. Don't, you don't got to look too hard. You I good? So they've been allegedly okay. spotted out at a hotspot called Station 1640, and um, you know they were sitting together at a table, quote, booed up. Oh as well and okay. so got it so okay. there you nigga took the glasses off put them back you have it hold on let me well, i just want to see we can see it after too okay you have to see if he's a good here. guy is he a oh, nice he's... guy is he like a right nerdy you guy? can't look at a picture and see if somebody here. like okay he needs to be good solid if you're gonna be around like your good. kids potentially like okay Ray oh, J don't say that. he doesn't want to hear that part yet what? not around the kids okay but no you know what i got my kids with me so okay. my, mm -hmm. my son with me. Okay. Okay. And All my right. daughter with, with her because my daughter doing school. She loves school. She don't never want to miss school. Are you guys going to have this conversation? Because it feels like she knows nothing. No, I'm going to call life. Monica as soon as we leave here. And listen, Monica, if I said anything wrong. Yeah, him responding to Monica also. <laughs> Hold on. You ain't talking. I apologize. You are a great artist. You and Brandy have made history together. And yes. all I want to do is just kind of like shake it up a little bit to get y'all to see that 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 is that should be like one of those like last you know last wave tours like let's do this for like the next three years mm -hmm. let's let's hit every every globe outside of the planet into like mars and other places <laughs> yes. right? and nobody you ain't talk to your sister be, but well we we did the verses and after the verses i'm like monica brandy this is it you see me i say y'all want the brandy and monica <laughs> tour comment ten thousand comments that's the first time i ever got ten thousand comments in my yes. life it was like twenty thousand. so i said let's do it and then Monica was supposed to meet us later mm -hmm. to meet, and she she flossed us and went to the strip club. Okay, well, for uh, she flossed us and went to the strip club. That is hilarious. Um, did y'all see that they got this going on? I slept. With you slept? Who? Like in the bed? Sleep, like sleep. night, night, good night, or like have sex? Have sex? But you still at niggas' house. But you still at niggas' house. So it's just a, really? for me, it don't matter. It don't. It don't matter. To me, to me, it just matters. Period. To me, it just matters. Period. Though. Doesn't matter about TV. I'm always on TV. You over there. You over at these niggas' house. You over at these niggas' house for real, real life. The night you drunk. I just don't ever want to do. I love you. Like all this shit. I was like, and her friend is like, she loves hard. And so then Princess is like doing nasty shit. And then her friend starts doing the shit that with her to me. <laughs> I'm like, yo, her friend wanna be her. So she got her going out doing wild things. So you trying to make it seem like they you it's not like you fucked her friend and you trying to blame her for fucking her friend. And then when Princess is drunk and they both drunk together, and then Princess is like, I love you. Start doing, you know, look at our channel. Like, this bitch, do it too. In the camera. All that shit. Following Prince. The next day I told Prince, she don't even remember. I'm like, remember this. Your friend was showing me her.
So this is to, I guess, promote his new network that he has or something. Girl, girl, no, no, thank you, girl. No, no, thank you, girl. No, thank you. No, thank you. No, 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 thank you. No, thank you. That's how I feel. No, thank you. Get away from me with this. That's how I feel. It's, it's giving acting. It's giving doing too much. It's giving I'm over it. It's giving I wish y'all let it go, let it flow, let it go. Um, But yeah, no, let's let's find a Porsche Nini text messages because I wanted to read them text messages, y'all. But hold on, oh wait a minute. God, neighbors, y'all got to get in here and see this. Simon Gubadia is so messy. He recently posted a photo with his homegirl, Yasmin, and obviously the comments were going crazy. He pinned this comment saying, I'm not going to lie, she is way more beautiful than Portia. Simon, you are a messy Gemini. You know how to hit someone where it hurts. If I was Portia, I would be bothered for real. Like I said, Simon pinned this comment, and it is so messy. What happened to you loving Portia until the divorce is final? The divorce is definitely not final. So why are you liking and pinning and sharing shady stuff like this regarding your estranged wife? It's also crazy. Uh, Portia hasn't done much and hasn't really commented on Simon since filing. Um, so for him to be taking these jabs at Portia because he's upset is absolutely crazy. If you want to get your wife back, this is definitely not the way to do it. Now, something tells me Portia is totally over Simon, especially because he was pictured out with NeNe Leaks just a couple of days ago. But neighbors, I'm curious to know what you guys think about this entire situation. I think that him pinning this comment is a telltale sign of... Oh my God, neighbors, y'all got to get in here and see this, especially because he was pictured out with NeNe Leaks just a couple of days ago. But neighbors, I'm curious to know what you guys think about this entire situation. I think that him pinning this comment is a telltale sign of his character. Um, but I want to know what you guys think. Let me know your comments below. Peace. I'm just wondering, did everybody forget hey, about how he handled... I'm just wondering, did everybody forget how he handled Fallon? Like, it's all of the same shit. It's all of the, the same proclamations of love on the internet. And then the next day, y'all breaking up. Y'all not together no more. And it's, you know, I ain't never sorry for that bitch. So these are the text messages. Portia, Nene said, hey, Portia, I hope you are doing well. I am shocked to hear that we have issues and you didn't want to work with me. Wow. Just wow. We have double dated a few times. Vegas, Miami, your home, etc. It's sad to hear. We have hung out in Dubai. You were texting me about housewives. Sad. We are black women that need to work, not stopping each other from working. And this is my thing. How did this stop you from working? Nene, you still had the job. They let Portia go. So this didn't stop your bag, but okay. Portia said, yeah, all of that and through all of this, and this is your first text. How, who, and how the fuck do you, do you not even check on Lil Sis? Enough say You chose a side and I'm good with that. People weird as fuck. I've shown loyalty time and time. I've also shown concern and genuine love during all of your hardships, but I never get it back. It's cool though. When people move differently, so do I. You are wrong in every way. You went extremely too far. Nothing you are saying is valid enough to go to production company, to a production company and say you do not want to work with Nini because we have issues in the past. Girl, wake up. I kept telling y'all what they had in common is how petty and small they are, how vengeful they vengeful they are. Both of y'all are like this. Portia's a snake and Nini's a snake. That's why you missed you so much. It's over without you. Snakes missing snakes. Nini went on to say, I gave you your space. I didn't want to invade your privacy. I didn't want to seem nosy. I wanted to wait until I see you in person. I was excited about working with you. As far as Naomi and Simon are concerned, they have their their own relationship and I have nothing to do with that I only speak child you know they cut it off and I guess they ain't put the rest but that that was because that was basically the bulk of the text messages between the two of them uh unk the ex-wife really went from Gobadia to Williams again who goes from an authentic essential ancestral name to an unseasoned name and he what this is so stupid. And the fact that he's even laughing at comments like that. Yeah, it does show how how childish 
and insecure this man is. But we've been telling y'all this, but because he got fake teeth and Botox and they was making 99 fucking Instagram videos to prove that they was truly in love with one another, everybody going to act like we wasn't seeing what we were seeing. I told y'all that man trade in women every two to three years. That's been his pattern. Two to five years, five years max. If my post upsets your sensibilities, unfollow button top left. Child, they must be eating him up in his comments. And somebody says she's prettier than Portia. Girl, I guess. I guess. It's not like it matters who's prettier in this situation. Y'all both over there seemingly arguing or, or you know, having issue over an old nigga. Ugh. I saw you would. So I wanted to run this because it's hilarious to me how J Jermaine Dupree can say, I don't want to be with a woman if she is not going to the strip club with me, but then also be mad at the young women that make music for the strip club. Uh, I think it was with Gail King and Carrie Champion and all them. You were talking about how if you if, if a woman couldn't understand you being in the script club, she wasn't the woman for you. Yeah. If a woman or, you know, if a girl goes there, whatever, I feel like if a woman can't understand, understand this, yeah. it's not even about getting with it because you don't do nothing. You just go to strip club. Girls get naked. You can eat the music playing. You don't have to do anything. But if that is just too much for you, mm -hmm. then you that mean, means I'm mean too much for you. The strip club is too much for you. Yeah, if the strip club. You going with me to the strip club is too much for you. Uh -huh. Then that means I'm too much for you. One hundred percent. So that if that was a deal breaker off the top, one hundred percent. Really? Yeah, because I'm saying like I'm gonna use you, Jess, as an example. Mm -hmm. If me and Jess was talking and she came to Atlanta, and I said we going to Magic City tonight, and she was like, "Well, you know, I don't really fuck with no strip clubs. I don't know. I'm at that point, you you have broke our synergy." You flew to Atlanta to stay at my house mm -hmm. while I go party with my homeboys. Now, when you when you got I got a really nice house, JD, I'm sure. Yeah, but I'm saying, <laughs> but when I go to the strip club, as a woman, her mind's gonna start doing this, yeah. right? I asked mm -hmm. you to come with me mm -hmm. so that your mind wouldn't do that. What she wants you to do is to stay your ass at home and spend time with her. And the fact that you're a fifty-something-year-old man whose mind can't understand that it just shows how regressed and stunted your growth is and why you would point to just someone 20 years your junior because a grown-ass woman is not going to let you mind fuck her into thinking that there's something wrong with the fact that she would rather be in an intimate setting with another grown person so y'all can talk and relate to each other versus watching you uh, uh throw money on little Keisha's ass like this is some immature shit but I just want to point out the hypocrisy of of him saying this and then also judging Meg the Stallion and the City Girls and all of the other rap girls that make music for twerking. Oh, that's the only type of music they make. My nigga, apparently that's the only type of music y'all gonna play at the strip club. It's very weird to me that the men can't seem to see how they influence the young women to be this way in the first place. It's crazy to me. I saw somebody post the other day this mother, she was so, you know, my daughter's disappointed because I won't let her go to the Meg Thee Stallion concert, but she's 14 years old. And I'm, you know, everybody in the comments, this is good parenting, good parenting, good parenting. Oh, shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Because we was listening to worse shit and we turned out just fine. You was going to come around the fucking anyway. But that's not my point. Because I don't think that, you know, 14 year olds should be at Meg Thee Stallion concerts. I think that's a grown woman type of thing. But if she's already listening to Meg the Stallion, she's already being exposed to Meg the Stallion. So what difference does it make if she is at the concert or not? She's already seen her. She's already heard her. She already knows the words to the music. That's why she wants to go to the concert. So why is it that y'all feel like she's doing such a great thing as a parent to say, no, you can't go to the concert when she's obviously already a Meg the Stallion fan? That don't make no sense. A 50-year-old still being led by his inner teenage boy is a deal breaker. Child, to me, it's insane that your old lad still want to be sitting in a goddamn loud-ass strip club all day in a dark room. Like, y'all niggas is depressed on the inside. If you want to see titties and tail, you can throw money on your woman at the house. 
You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't understand why if I'm coming in town to see you, that's what you want to do. Because that's what that sounded like. Them kids was at the Ride Wave concert. I don't know the difference. It's so funny, right? Seeing women's bodies is a problem. But listening to niggas rap about fucking drugs and, and killing people is fine. It's really weird. It's really weird the way y'all only care about the subject matter when it's women. Because the boy, the men talk about all of the same shit and nobody cares. It doesn't, it doesn't even ring a bell for anybody to be bothered. Um, okay, I think I think that was it, y'all. Cause I'm gonna save, I'm gonna save the whole uh quiet on a set situation uh for the next uh members only live, y'all. But I gotta go because I need to. First of all, I need to go to this high yoga class. I need to get one more high yoga class in um, because I'm just I just need it uh, before all of this stuff that's coming up. That's low key. I'm excited. I'm happy for it. But it has me stressed out. <laughs> so, you know, because it's the April stuff and it's the June stuff. I have to finish. Uh, I have to fill out the shit for the trip because, you know, we're going to Thailand. Um, we got the eight people that we needed. So I'm going to Thailand. We going to Thailand. Um, so that means we only have three more beds left I think so if any of y'all want to sign up y'all should hurry up and do it before it's too late uh Real Housewives of Potomac reunion trailer drops okay hold up let me get it let me get it let me get it coming up on the Real Housewives of Potomac reunion. Okay. I want to set an intention for us today that each of you can find a path towards moving forward. Andy, I believe in these women and I expect nothing less tonight. I still love him. I still massage this man's feet every night. Michael's feet? I massage Michael's feet every night. Girl, as we said, them people still together. Has anyone else taken Robin's swallowing advice? <laughs> you have with the DJ. He's a radio personality. Okay. Oh. <laughs> Gordon's here. And he said, what's up, Gordon? Hey, how you doing, man? I'm sorry to hear about your dad passing. Thanks, Andy. I was there with him when he took his last breath. They iced me out of this group. Don't walk in, you walk in, not at the swine. You understand what I'm saying? I want to share something with you that some of you may have suspected. Oh, me, I'm sorry. So the screenshots of your husband's limp penis are photoshopped? If you knew how taboo it is, you would not say anything else. I, I did, and I have, and I have. Gordon alleged that Jeremiah may not be his son. Does Ink think Jeremiah is his son? He does. Still? Mia ain't shit. Mia, you, you's a nasty bitch. People don't know who their daddies is, girl. You're a loser. Giselle's an imp. Giselle. She is. Robin's a loser. Giselle's the devil. Giselle is evil. You are. All true. I think the two of you need Jesus himself. I have him. He is right here. Okay, this little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. Oh, I don't even know. I think I, I don't even know if I want to review this to tell y'all the truth. I don't even know if I want to review this stupid ass shit. So we got paternity issues with, with, with Mia. <sighs> nothing with Giselle, nothing with Robin and Juan. Girl, it looked boring. It looked boring because if y'all think I care about Mia and her kids' paternity, y'all are sadly mistaken. I do not care. Girl, I do not care. Girl, I do not care. Oh, her, her, and, her and this DJ do go way back. They're dating now, allegedly. They've been seen out together now, but they were together back in the day. It's somebody she goes way back with. Mm-hmm. 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 
Y'all really didn't make uh, them people famous just so y'all can make fun of them. That's crazy. That's so crazy. Anyway, y'all, I'm I'm done. Because y'all know I, I wasn't watching Real Housewives of Potomac anyway. But I, I don't know if I even feel like dealing with it. But I might. Just because I wasn't watching a season. So it might be something fresh in there for me somewhere. Juan is still not present at the reunion. Uh, not surprising. Please review because I need you to curse people out. Especially Robin and Ashley. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll, I'll consider it. All right, y'all. I appreciate y'all. I hope y'all enjoyed this members only live. Thank y'all so much for coming through. I appreciate everybody on this good Friday. I am about to go and try to accomplish a lot of things so that I can be on a plane early on Sunday morning. Okay. So I love you guys. I hope you have a good rest of y'all day and I'll see y'all next week on Tasha's channel and hopefully on mine as well. Peace out.